everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing another match review. Of course, last night we took on Crystal Palace in the Premier League. The score did end 2-2, so I'm just here to give you guys my thoughts, thoughts on the performance, thoughts going forward, so let's get into the video. Let's start off with the lineup then. Now, just off the top of my head, I believe it was Ramsdale, and then in defense we had Tomiyasu, White, Gabriel and Tierney, then it was Party, Odegaard and Mill Smith Bro, Pepe, Saka and Aubameyang. I don't think I've missed anyone there. Uh, no, I think that's it. I personally was pretty happy with that starting 11. I thought it was very attacking minded. I thought it was a team that could definitely go and bring a good game to Crystal Palace, especially as they had Wilfred Zaha out. My only sort of concern was our midfield, of course. Um, it was really only party in there who was going to be doing the defensive midfield duty. Um, the one thing for me that we really messed up on in the summer is not signing a good central defensive midfielder, someone who is on par with Party. of course. There seems to always be either Thomas Party or Granite Shakarau, and it leaves us in a mess every single time. Um, so that was my only slight concern, but I was pretty confident going into the game. I thought it was a good starting 11, one that could definitely get the three points and keep the momentum going. Moving on to the game itself then, now Arsenal had a very very good first 15 minutes or so of the game, of course we scored the opening goal in the 8th minute, it all started from a corner from I believe Odegaard um, who actually really did not do a great job of the corner but of course Pepe um, played that one too with Tomiyasu and crossed the ball in and it found Aubameyang and honestly at that point when Aubameyang scored that goal from that narrow angle did the flip, I thought Aubameyang's back, Arsenal are back, we are on our way up the table um, and I was so, so excited. I thought we're going to score quite a few goals here, you know, we're going to be firing, ready to go, going to go and get a second one but little did I know that was the complete opposite of what happened last night and from that moment onwards after sort of the 15th minute everything fell very, very flat. Of course, with Arsenal deciding that they wanted to defend this one goal lead, they went into their shells and Crystal Palace grew back into the game. They had a lot more of the ball and they did have a couple of good chances in that first half as well. There was the one chance from Conor Gallagher right on the halftime whistle that definitely left me a little flustered. A great, great save from Aaron Ramsdale, who for me was our man of the match last night. And to be honest, he's been man of the match for quite a few of our recent games. I think he's been really, really brilliant. And for me, it should definitely be our number one. Um, so yeah, going into half time, 1-0 up and feeling pretty nervous, I won't lie. I think Crystal Palace weren't really bringing it at the second, at the end of that second half. And I was quite nervous to see what would happen, whether we would come out fighting, try and get a second, or whether we would just continue to sit behind the ball and defend. Um, so yeah, quite a nervy first half there. On to the second half then. Now it became very clear quite quickly that we had decided to stick with the same tactics from the first half, defend this 1-0 lead that we had and of course that did not last long at all. Um, Crystal Palace had come out of the blocks firing, they were playing with a high press and they managed to take advantage of a small mistake we made in midfield and Benteke went on to score, stuck it in the bottom corner and they had equalised. Now, to be honest, they did deserve to equalise. We looked very, very flat. Um, just, you know, we just looked like we didn't really care. Nobody was playing with that much intensity. So I wasn't really surprised. Was I annoyed? Yes, of course I was. I wanted us to go for that second goal as soon as we'd scored the first, but no. We decided to defend this 1-0 lead, which in my opinion is absolutely ridiculous. If you score in the 8th minute, you do not just sit back and hope for the best. You go and you try and get a second, you try and kill the game off, but no, that is not what happened. And of course, Crystal Palace did go on to score a second goal and go into the lead. That second goal also came from a mistake in our midfield. Um, I think it was Sambi Lakonga that time and Conor Gallagher very, very easily took the ball from him, went on the counter and Edward finished the job for them. They were 2-1 up, I was absolutely gutted. I went into the game with a lot of confidence, thinking we would potentially be um, in the top four by the end of Friday. <sighs> of course, that was not to be. Um, 
just a really, really flat, disappointing performance. Of course, Lacazette did come on and change the game. He did score that very, very late equaliser for us, which thank you, Lacazette. Honestly, I really, really love Laka. I think he is a great player. Always comes on, tries to prove a point, never sulks, considering he is on the bench pretty much all the time now. Um, he came on, injected a bit of passion, a bit of fight into the team, and we managed to get one point, which, to be honest, I don't think we really deserved. I think Crystal Palace were very, very unlucky last night. Another thing I did quickly want to touch on was that MacArthur challenge on Saka. I honestly have watched this back at least 20 times, and for me, it gets worse every time I watch it. For me, a straight red. Um, I can't believe VAR watched that and didn't um, think that that was a red. Honestly, what is going on? He volleys Saka in the back of the leg. No intent to play the ball. Was not even looking at the ball. Could, could have caused a very, very serious injury. Um, Saka didn't even come on in the second half, so I'm really hoping and praying that he is okay. Um, but yeah, honestly, I had to mention that because that has really, really got to me. It's annoyed me. What do you guys think about it? Do you think that should have been a straight red? I think he should have got a yellow before that anyway. So he should have got a red all in all, even if it wasn't a straight red. So that was something that really, really annoyed me last night. Yeah, somehow we managed to nick a point last night. We did not allow Crystal Palace to overtake us in the table, thankfully. Um, one point is, of course, better than no points. But for me, we should have got those three points last night. Um, Mikel Arteta's interview after the game was very, very strange, in my opinion. He said um, that the reason we went with that game plan was that the boys... Um, got something and they wanted to protect something. Now, I'd understand that statement if maybe we'd scored that first goal in the 70th, 80th minute. Do you know what? Buckle down, defend, let's get out of here with the three points. But no, the goal was scored in the eighth minute. If you think you're going to be able to defend from eight minutes onwards, then do you know what? You're just stupid. I think you've got to go for a second goal, a third goal, kill the game off, get the job done. Don't just sit back and hope that you can defend. Obviously, Crystal Palace are going to go for you. They're going to go at you um, and try and get the equaliser, try and win. Why would they not? Um, so yeah, very, very strange from Arteta. I think last night we looked like we lacked any style of play. Um, some of the players didn't really look that bothered, which does sort of make me think are they happy do they know what the game plan is do they enjoy playing um in this team we're in this way um so yeah i think Mikel arteta definitely for me has a big big question mark over his head still i personally can't really see the direction he's trying to go in i think after this length of time a manager should have sort of instilled his style of play on a team and I can't see it. Um, we're very, very boring to watch. I remember a few years ago, Arsenal were, for me anyway, the most exciting team to watch and I do not get that sense at all anymore. We're very, very boring, very predictable and honestly, I'm all I've got right now is hope. I hope some prayers that things can improve. Aston Villa on Friday, I'm feeling pretty worried about it. Um, obviously recently we've not had the best results against Villa. My family are all Villa fans, so it's one that I dread every time anyway. Um, but yeah, that will be my next video, probably going to be up on Saturday, so look out for that. I'll see you guys all very, very soon.